welcome to this week's episode of Escape to the Country. Today, our property-hungry pair are hoping to swap their busy city lives for a more relaxing way of life in the Shropshire countryside. Rod and Jane, both in their 30s, are quitting their banking jobs in London to return to Jane's birthplace of Shropshire. They have a four-year-old son, Freddie, and want to bring him up away from the hustle and bustle of the city and in a more sedate surrounding of a country village. Ideally, they would like a modern house or new build. They are not a fan of old country cottages and prefer the minimalist look. They have a large extended family, so a house with at least six bedrooms is top of their list of requirements. Rob and Jane are looking to set up their own accountancy business from their new property, so will be working from home a lot, so a property with land included would be ideal to possibly build a separate office space. They would like to be within or very close by a friendly village that has lots of amenities including a leisure centre with swimming pool and gym. A nice pub nearby and a good primary school as four-year-old son Freddie will be starting school in September. Rod and Jane do have a healthy budget of £2 million but Shropshire is a popular county for ex-city livers and this has pushed house prices up in the area. They are not keen on traditional cottages, so a modern spacious house is a must. It must have at least six bedrooms due to family get-togethers, at least two acres of surrounding land or garden with potential of building a small office, within or walking distance to a lively village with amenities, a leisure centre or pub, etc. And as Freddie will be starting school soon, the school must be within a five minute walk from the house. We've found three distinctive properties for Rod and Jane, one of which could be their new forever home. The final property will be the mystery house and the couple will need to use their imagination on this one. And if the couple remain open-minded, it could be the home they've been dreaming of. As both Rod and Jane are still currently working in London, they weren't able to join us on this house hunt, but will be viewing the videos of the houses from their rented Canary Wharf flat in due course. Right, let's begin and head up near to the village of Honorbury in Shropshire to visit our three properties. Honorbury is a small village and has a traditional pub and small primary school next door. All three of our properties today are clustered within a mile of each other and roughly about two miles from the village of Honorbury. Unfortunately, as there are no roads to any of our properties, that does mean about an hour's walk into the village, but I'm sure Rod and Jane can cope with that. Property number one sits within a beautiful gladed woodland. The cottage dates from the early to mid 1800s and old maps show it situated in an area known as the gutter. As you can see, there is easy access to the property. A fantastic area for outdoor swimming. Friendly neighbours by the looks of it. A good and plentiful supply of water if needed. So we've just arrived at property number one, as you can see it is set in this 
beautiful woodland setting here. Access to this charming cottage is via this lovely driveway. That carries on up just to the side of the cottage. As you can see, the cottage is very much in the open plan style uh, with some original features. But otherwise, it is open plan living in this charming cottage. And it's surrounded by some beautiful landscape garden even though this cottage is open plan living it does still retain some of its charming original features So that was property number one for you, a beautiful open plan cottage with some remaining original features. And we will head down the uh, beautifully laid out drive and head to property number two. Don't forget, we will have the mystery house as well for you which is an absolute cracker but yeah let's head back down this drive and carry on to our next property and now we get our first glimpse of property number two house number two is a beautiful mid 19th century cottage that used to have a small lake or pond next to it that is long gone but it does still have the pheasantry close by that seems to have been there almost as long as the cottage and the birds make lively neighbours. Beautiful little cottage. Let's go and have a further look around it. So we've got another charming little cottage here with original features. As you can see, it's had a brand new roof. So as you can see, property number two again has beautifully manicured gardens, beautifully landscaped. Close to all amenities. Okay, let's move on to the mystery house. And now we move on to the mystery house, which I'm extremely excited to show our couple today. Welcome to property number three and our mystery house. Welcome to Withersley, a black and white timber framed house nestled in this gorgeous valley. 
Withersley was originally built as a farmhouse in the early 16th century and added to in the 17th, 18th and finally the 19th centuries. The building is Grade 2 listed and it seems someone in the last couple of decades made the sensible decision to protect the building and its thatch roof by putting on a corrugated iron roof, thus saving this nearly 500 year old building from decay. Entry into the farmhouse is via a 19th century timber frame door, but watch your head as the beams are very low and anyone over 5 foot 5 is going to struggle standing upright. The walls are made of original wattle and daub and possibly stuffed with wool to provide that extra insulation. The door and staircase are from the 19th century and provide access to two spacious bedrooms. The range dates from the 19th century and the cottage has stood relatively untouched since the 19th century. Maps show two buildings standing on this spot and there is rubble evidence of another building. This may have been an outside privy or maybe an animal enclosure. So as you can see this property is filled with all, all mod cons. There's probably a nice, nice kitchen there. Um, underfloor heating. There's the kitchen, as you can see, beautiful kitchen, may need a little work. Let's take a closer look at the uh, the fire place here. Lovely, lovely cooker there. Uh, you've got hot water on command there. Plenty of storage for your pots and pans. It's a stunning cottage with uh, lots of original features that could be incorporated into the modern home. As you can see there's remnants there of a thatched roof. It's been covered sometime in the 20th century. But if you wanted to convert it back to the thatch roof, I'm sure it's easily done. Nice storage level up there. Or maybe a nice mezzanine and put a sofa or a chaise longue. Lots of potential for this property, as I'm sure you will agree. There is an upstairs level as well that I will show you. Again, with lots of potential. It's a, a nice sturdy um, staircase. Upstairs. 
a lovely big room here upstairs. Some lovely original floorboards. It could uh, easily be cleaned up and varnished. Some lovely views out the window there. Nice little storage space. And another room through there. Just head through to the smaller second bedroom. Room actually. Again, with lovely views out onto the garden. Um, obviously, no need for central heating because you have insulated walls. <laughs> Lovely staircase from the wall there going and look around the gardens. The amenities in this property would need to be modernised um, as there is no bathroom or toilet and um, but yeah apart from that it's a beautiful 16th century cottage that has three rooms downstairs, um, possibly a kitchen diner, and then two large bedrooms upstairs, one of which could be converted into a bathroom toilet. So the previous owners have uh, been wildlife friendly put a nice bird house on the side there. As you can see the roof was replaced in the 20th century but uh, it could be converted back to thatch cottage if required. The house would possibly need redecorating uh, inside and outside unless uh, shabby chic is your thing. All the windows would need replacing. Um, but I can't see that being a problem. The house is fully insulated. There is a large range downstairs that would provide plenty of heat in the winter and in the summer. The walls are fully insulated with straw and if you do feel that you need some more insulation I'm sure the farmer about a mile away could uh, give you some spare straw. So there we have it our three lovely properties here in Shropshire and of course the wonderful Mystery House. I cannot wait to see what Rod and Jane, our young couple, think of what they have seen. Well, we had to wait an agonising six months to hear back from Rod and Jane and it was via their solicitors. Of course, this got everyone in the Escape to the Country office very excited as we were eager to hear if they had put in an offer on any of the properties. But strangely, it was a letter informing us that, quote, our clients would be suing the ass off us. We had completely failed to meet the client search brief. And although the village was beautiful and had some amenities they had been searching for, a pond does not count as a swimming pool. And walking an hour to and from the school does not equal going to the gym. 
won't repeat on air their views on the properties, but let's just say they didn't share our vision of them. The letter goes on to say that the couple were most disappointed on missing out on a free jolly to the countryside where they get to stay in a posh hotel and participate in local traditions. Well, I think you will agree that Rod, Jane and Freddie have missed out on a wonderful opportunity to live in a beautiful part of the country in one of these three beautiful properties. Until next time, stay safe. <laughs>